Chapter 3 Underway at Last Graham carried Felix below in the canvas sack. There were small cabins up and down both sides of the lower deck for the crew. Felix reached out with his paw as they entered the tiny cabin. Maybe he should have tried harder to stay with Mr. Thompson, he thought. The walls of the cabin were made of some kind of cardboard and shredded easily with his passing swipe. You stay down here, my young friend. I'll get you some milk. Don't be afraid. I'll be back as soon as I can. When Graham shut the cabin door, it was dark. Felix could hear men on the deck above clomping along this way and that. There were loud shouts from the officers to open hatches, stow gear, and belay rigging. Workmen sawed wood, hammered nails, and occasionally burst into laughter over some unheard joke. Felix listened to the loud noises above him. He crouched down on the bunk with his black ears flattened down against his head and mewed sadly. He didn't understand why he had to stay down here. There was no light or fresh air. He wanted to investigate the noises and smells of the ship. He wanted to find something to reassure him that this new place was going to be all right. The lonely kitten purred anxiously until the silent rocking of the ship lulled him to sleep. For the next few days, Graham kept Felix in his cabin. Felix wanted to explore this strange new place. He missed his own family back home and wondered how long he would have to stay down here. Graham came and checked on the little kitten when he could, but like all the crew, he had many tasks to complete before the ship could depart. Graham had no time to show Felix around the ship. He was worried the men were working so fast they would never see the kitten wandering around. Felix hadn't had a chance to learn how to stay safe on his own. Mostly, Felix tried to sleep, curled up on Graham's bunk, and stay out of the way. He ate his meals in Graham's small cabin and wondered when he would be going back to his home on land. One morning, Felix awoke with a start to the sound of a tugboat's horn. Men shouted and ran about on the deck above. The loud blast signaled the tug was moving. The ship lurched to one side as the strain came on the tow rope and it veered in line with the tugboat. Felix could hear creaks and groans from all over the wooden ship. He leapt down from the bunk and peeked out the door. Immediately his paws were wet. Water rushed by him as he stood in the doorway. Felix arched his back in fear. He could feel the ship moving, picking up speed as the tugboat pulled valiantly on the tow line. Felix watched water pour in the openings in the bow every time the ship dipped down in a wave. He mewed for, some, for someone to come and stop this rush of water. His weak little voice was lost among the, the sounds of the ship making its acquaintance with the sea. He jumped from the doorway back up to the bunk, meowing loudly again, hoping someone would find him and comfort him. Crewmen finally came below deck and saw the water rolling about, nearly a foot deep. They quickly learned the, ha the hawse holes in the bow, through which the anchor cable runs, had not been plugged for the sea voyage. Some men rushed forward to fix the problem, and some men stayed, ran to pump out the water. But no one remembered to check on little Felix. He thought of his mom and sisters, wondering if they missed him. Lying on Graham's bunk, Felix quietly licked his wet paws, remembering the warm basket they all slept in at home. Felix spent more days below deck, scared and alone. He could feel his stomach swaying inside his body in time with the wild motion of the sea. The crew would pass by Graham's cabin, bleary-eyed, sore, and wanting only to lie down for a few hours before they had to head back on deck. Even Graham had little time for the kitten. 
He brought a tin of condensed milk twice a day for Felix, petting him as he ate. Graham tried to comfort the forlorn, seasick kitten as best as he could. He tried wrapping a towel around the weak animal to keep out the damp sea air, but then he would have to leave Felix alone in the dark cabin. Felix was not at all happy with the way the ship moved. He felt like he was riding a horse, bucking at the bit. He could never predict which way the ship would move next. The tired and scared kitten did his best to stay put, firmly in the middle of Graham's bunk. One morning, Felix awoke and noticed the ship no longer pitched and rolled in the high seas. It seemed to have made its peace with the waves and behaved more like an old mare, long accustomed to pulling a wagon along a well-worn path. Now the ship rolled docilely from side to side, a more regular and comforting motion. There were no frightening noises coming from above. A rope creaked, a sail snapped in the breeze, and everything seemed controlled and calm. Felix decided he could finally venture up on deck. The bright light hurt his eyes and the sharp salt air stung his lungs, but the sun was warm and the air did smell clean and fresh. The helmsman up on the half deck slowly turned the wheel one way, then the other, keeping the ship on course. Felix rubbed against the door frame, shook his little body, and tried looking at the matted clumps of fur. Come here, you. I know what'll fix you up. When I came home looking like you, my mom would give me a big dose of castor oil, then send me to the tub for a good scrub up. We can skip the castor oil, but a good scrub up looks in order. With that, Jumbo Goddard picked up Felix and thrust him in a sudsy bowl of warm water. Felix let out a squawk, but submitted to the cleaning. You might squawk now, but you'll be glad to get rid of the bits of tar and dirt clinging to your fur. He held the wet animal up by the scruff of the neck and looked him in the eye. You'll be all right, young fella. Now you've got to get your, your sea legs. Run along before the mate puts you to work. Jumbo put Felix on the warm deck and the kitten fled to the safety of Graham's cabin. He didn't stay there long, though when he thought about the warm sun and the fresh air. On deck again, the now fluffy kitten tried out his newly acquired sea legs. He slowly padded up and down the waist of the ship, following the waterway from the forecastle to the steerage cabin. Finally, he de developed a sort of saunter as he walked. Yes, he thought, his four legs all moving in different directions at once, keeping his body on an evil keel. This is first rate. When the ship rolled, he could see over the bulwark to the horizon with no land in sight. The mighty waves, white on their tops, rolled up to the ship and at the last minute bowed to the solid vessel and ducked under the keel. On one of his turns along the deck, Felix heard a loud flop behind him. Turning around, he was conf confronted with a flying fish lying on the, in the scuppers. The silvery blue fish had fins on its side, like wings, and reminded the young kitten of the birds back home. He lost no further time in thought and made his first fresh meal of the voyage. That afternoon, Felix picked out a sunny spot on the main yard knight's head for a nap. He contentedly licked his paws, savoring the meal, and wondered what all the fuss at the beginning of the voyage had been about.